This is the brand new Galaxy Z Fold 4, and today I'll be showing you guys the fastest way to transfer all of your data to the Fold 4, regardless of whether you're transferring from a Samsung device, a non-Samsung Android device, or even an iPhone. I'll even show you how to transfer your data from a USB stick if you won't have your old device with you by the time the new one arrives. First, let's start with a quick unboxing and a physical comparison to last year's Fold 3. Opening the box, the first thing you see is the Fold 4, and if you flip this box over, there's a little container here, and if you open this, you get a USB-C to USB-C cable, a SIM ejector tool, and a quick start guide. Now this is the unlocked version of the phone, so I'm not gonna have anything else in this box, but if you've got a carrier version, you may have some carrier documentation as well. For now, let's just set this to the side. There's a pull tab here to help take the phone out, and beneath the phone, there is nothing else. So let's move all this to the side and take a closer look at the phone. In the upper right corner, you'll see a little SIM card icon, and if you look a little closer, you'll see that that's where your SIM card goes in. And in case you're wondering, there's no micro SD card option for the Fold 4. Flipping over to the inside of the device, you'll see a little arrow right here. Just pull here and you'll be able to take this screen protector off. So flipping it back over to the back, first impressions is I do still love this phantom black color. It is very fingerprint resistant and it's the color I've been getting on all of my devices. Before we get to the setup process, I do wanna quickly show you guys the size difference between the Fold 3 and the Fold 4. As you can see, the screen on the Fold 4 is a little bit shorter than the screen on the Fold 3. And if I switch them to a stacked position, you can see that the screen on the Fold 4 is a little bit wider than the screen on the Fold 3. Switching over to the cover screens, you can see that the Fold 4 screen extends further to the left, and the hinge is considerably smaller compared to the Fold 3. This allows you to have a wider screen on the Fold 4, but it is also a bit shorter compared to the Fold 3. Taking a look at the sides, the button and SIM tray locations are pretty much identical. And flipping over to the back, you can see that the cameras look very similar as well, with the main difference being that the Fold 4 cameras have a larger bezel compared to the Fold 3's cameras. Looking at the hinge gaps, we see almost no difference with the Fold 4 on the right and the Fold 3 on the left. When it comes to opening and closing the devices, the hinge on the Fold 4 actually feels a bit more stiff and not quite as smooth as it does on the Fold 3. And I think part of that is because they have a new hinge technology that they're using here. Because when I grab my Fold 3 and I open this, it feels like it just smoothly opens with the same amount of force all the way from open to close. Whereas with the Fold 4, it's not quite as smooth. There's definitely a certain section right about here that is a bit more loose compared to the rest of the path, so it's not quite as smooth of an experience. Now keep in mind, the hinge on the Fold 4 is brand new, so this may even out over time. I do remember the Fold 3 hinge being more stiff when I got this as well, and I've been using this as my daily driver for about a year now, so after a year's worth of use, I would kind of expect it to smooth out a bit. So purely from a hardware standpoint, if you have the Galaxy Fold 3 and you're considering upgrading to the Galaxy Fold 4, you're probably not gonna notice too much of a difference. Yeah, the screen form factor is a little bit different, but unless you're holding them side to side, I don't know that that's gonna make the biggest difference in the world, especially coming from a Fold 3. Now, as I get time to actually use the Fold 4 and test things out like its cameras and other features that are available, it may become more easy to recommend the upgrade from the Fold 3 to the Fold 4, but first impressions wise, if you have a Fold 3, you're probably good just saving your money and keeping that. That said, if you have a Fold 2, it may actually be worth the upgrade to the Fold 4 because there are some significant upgrades. Most importantly is the screen quality. The Fold 2 had almost like a rubbery kind of feeling screen. It certainly didn't feel like glass, whereas the Fold 3 and the Fold Floor have a glass-like feel to it. The Fold 3 added water resistance and the Fold 4 maintains that water resistance where the Fold 2 didn't have that either. And the cameras on the Fold 4 will be considerably better than the cameras that came on the Fold 2. And if you're an S Pen user, only the Fold 3 and Fold 4 support the S Pen. The Fold 2 doesn't support the S Pen at all. So if those things matter to you, it may be worth the upgrade if you're coming from a Fold 2. Before we start the setup process on your Fold 4, let's talk about what to do if you need to trade in your old device before you can transfer any data. 
And don't skip this part of the video because I'll be giving you some important details that you'll need to know when you set up your new phone, regardless of whether you use this data transfer method or the next method I'll show you in a bit. This first transfer method is to securely transfer all of your data to a USB stick using Samsung's official smart switch application. And I'll be showing you on both an S22 Ultra and a Pixel 5 because the data you can transfer is slightly different depending on whether you're transferring from a Samsung device or a non-Samsung Android device. And if you own an iPhone, you can't use this USB stick method, but you can still transfer a little bit of data using your iCloud, which I'll show you in a bit. That said, if you wanna transfer all your messages, apps, and more, you'll really wanna have your iPhone with you when you get your new device so you can connect them directly to each other. But again, more on that in a bit. First, you'll need either a USB-C thumb drive or a USB-C to USB-A adapter and a standard USB stick. You can even use something like a small external SSD like this Samsung T5 drive, but you honestly won't see much of a speed difference. So just use whichever thumb drive has enough storage for all of your data. And if you need to buy a thumb drive, I'll have some links in the description to some good options of various storage sizes. And if you don't have a USB-C to USB-A adapter, you should be able to call Samsung and request one since you just purchased one of their latest flagship devices. And the last I knew, they were sending them out for free. But that may have changed by the time you see this video. If you'd rather just buy one of these adapters, I'll leave a link in the description for that too. Next, you'll need to download the Samsung Smart Switch application from the Google Play Store. So just search for the application and install it. Once it's downloaded, tap open to open the application. And in the upper right corner, you'll see an icon that looks like a micro SD card. Go ahead and tap that. And you'll see that it says that you have no external storage device detected. So now you just need to plug your thumb drive into your device. You'll notice that on my S22 Ultra, it was recognized as USB storage, but on my Pixel 5, it wasn't recognized at all. If this happens to you, pull down your notification shade and you should see a notification saying there's an issue with your USB drive. You can go ahead and tap to fix that and it'll ask you to format the USB drive. Now, before you format it, it's important that you understand that all of the data that's currently on that thumb drive will be erased. So make sure you back up all of that data before you format it. Once the drive is formatted, you should see the USB storage option. Go ahead and tap that. And Smart Switch will search through all of the data on your device to find everything you can transfer. Once it's done searching through your phone, you'll get the option to transfer everything, just accounts, calls, contacts, and messages, or you get a custom option where you can select exactly what you'd like to transfer. For now, we're gonna select custom so I can show you guys exactly what you can and can't transfer. So now I'm gonna tap next, and I'll be able to be very specific in what I wanna transfer. The first thing I wanna point out with this USB method is that you can't transfer quite as much data as you'd be able to if you had both the old and new device right next to each other and could connect them directly. However, you can still transfer the vast majority of data with this USB method, and I'll show you guys the extra things you can transfer by connecting both the old and new devices directly to each other in a minute. So at the top, you get the option to transfer all of your calls and contacts, and this does include call history. You get the option to transfer all of your messages, and if you tap this little icon on the right, you can select whether you wanna transfer all of your messages or just messages from a certain time period. You can also transfer all of your applications, and if you tap the arrow next to that, you can select which specific apps you do and don't wanna transfer by checking or unchecking these little boxes. And at the top, you get the option to deselect or select all of your applications. Galaxy Wearable is an option that will only appear if you have a Samsung accessory installed to your old device. So that could be something like a Galaxy Watch or Samsung's wireless earbuds. And here's where you get the first difference between transferring from a non-Samsung Android device and a Samsung device. You'll notice that the Samsung device also gives you the option to transfer app settings instead of just the plugins. Now the plugins are specific to each Samsung device. So if you have their wireless earbuds, there's a specific plugin for this specific type of wireless earbud, and that'll automatically be installed on the new device if you check the plugins box. App settings is an extra thing you can transfer if your old device is going to be a Samsung device. And this will transfer all of the specific settings for all of your accessories, so you don't have to go back into the settings and set them up the way you want. Transferring settings is where we see another big difference between transferring from a non-Samsung device to a Samsung device. Here, you can see that the phone's settings are transferred, but when transferring from a Samsung device, you also get the option to transfer your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth settings. Now, the Wi-Fi settings is important because that means you don't have to re-enter any of your Wi-Fi passwords on the new device. Whereas if you're transferring from this Pixel device using this USB method, you would have to re-enter those Wi-Fi passwords. You'll see that transferring from a Samsung device also gives you the option to transfer app settings for things like the game launcher, camera, and your My Files applications. 
And it kind of makes sense that that's Samsung exclusive because these settings are Samsung specific settings. And customization service is another Samsung specific option. And it's a feature that lets Samsung customize your experience when using things like Bixby. So again, since that's a Samsung exclusive thing, that's why you don't see it on a non-Samsung device. Further down, you'll notice that Samsung offers the option to transfer your home screen data, whereas the Pixel does not. And this includes things like your widget and app layout, as well as your lock screen and home screen wallpapers and any Samsung deck settings. Further down, you get the option to transfer images, videos, audio, and documents and files. And if you tap these little arrows, you can actually select which specific images, videos, or files you wanna transfer. And it'll even keep those files in their respective albums. And if your old device has a micro SD card installed, that option will appear at the bottom under the title SD card. And you also get the option to transfer any images, videos, music, or documents and files that are saved specifically to your micro SD card. At the very bottom, it says you can find out what data can't be backed up. And if you tap this, you see that some app data can't be backed up due to that particular application's policies. So depending on the application, it may or may not transfer that app data. On the Samsung side, it also tells you that it won't transfer any read-only contacts, and it also won't transfer things from your calendar or Samsung Notes, because those are linked to your Samsung account, so when you log back into your Samsung account on your new device, those will automatically be transferred anyway. And down on home screen, you'll see that the default wallpaper won't be transferred. And in case you're wondering, WhatsApp data can be transferred, but unfortunately, I don't have WhatsApp, so I can't demonstrate that for you guys. And I'm pretty sure you need to have both your old device and new device with you at the same time in order to transfer that WhatsApp data. So this particular USB method probably won't work for that. But hopefully Samsung adds that option in a future update. Once you've selected everything you want to transfer, it'll show you how many gigabytes you're transferring and about how long it expects to take to transfer all that data to the USB stick. And in my personal experience, it's usually considerably faster than the estimated time. However, if you notice that the transfer is estimated to take some time over two hours, it would be best to make sure that your device has a full charge or maybe put it on a wireless charger while the data is transferring. If you select more data than what your USB stick has capacity for, you'll get a warning at the top that says there's not enough space and that you have to deselect a certain amount of data to make it fit. Fortunately, there are two ways around this. The first is to obviously use a USB stick with more storage space. And the second option is to use two USB sticks and transfer some of the data to one stick and the rest of the data to the other stick. Once you get your new device, you'll be able to restore data from both of the sticks. And I'll show you guys how to do that in a little bit. Once you've selected everything you wanna transfer, scroll to the bottom and tap backup. Now this is an incredibly important step if you're gonna be transferring from a non-Samsung Android device. Right now, it's going to ask you to set a password for the USB storage. And this is a unique password that's not linked to any accounts. So what that means is if you forget this password, then plug your USB stick into your new device, you will not be able to recover any of that data unless you still have your old device with you. That's why it's very important that you write this password down somewhere and tap this little eye icon so you can see what the password is to make sure you write it down correctly. Now the good news is if for some reason you still had your old device with you, you can just go through this backup process again and create a new password that you can remember. If your previous device was a Samsung device, it's going to encrypt the data using your Samsung account. So all you need to do is log into your Samsung account on the new device and you'll be able to decrypt the data. Once you're done setting your password, if you have a non-Samsung phone, tap OK, and you'll be asked to enter it one more time, then tap OK again, and it'll start backing up all your data. On the Samsung side of things, just tap OK, and it'll start backing up the data here. Once it's done backing everything up, you'll see your backup results, then just tap next, and it'll show you that you're all set. On the Samsung side of things, you get this Samsung Cloud option, and if you tap this, you get the option to sync all of these things to your Samsung Cloud to transfer more data automatically when you get your new Samsung device. Once you're done selecting what you wanna transfer here, tap back, then tap done on both devices. The last step, once the data is transferred to the USB stick, is to pull down your notification shade and eject the USB drive to remove it safely. And just like that, all your data is ready to transfer to your new device using a USB stick. Now let's take a look at the setup process on the Fold 4 and see what extra data can be transferred when you connect your old device directly to the Fold 4. The first thing you wanna do when you turn your Fold 4 on is check the battery life. If you have a lot of data to transfer, then you're gonna want more than 60% battery on your new device. So if you see that it's less than 60%, go ahead and plug in to charge it while you go through the setup process. While that's charging, I can go ahead and transfer my SIM card into the new device. If you have your old device with you, you can take the SIM card out of that device and transfer it to the new device, or you can use a new SIM card direct from your carrier. Since I'm gonna be taking the SIM out of my old device, I first need to turn off both devices. To turn your Fold 4 off, just hold the side key and volume down buttons for a few seconds. That'll bring up this little menu, tap power off, then tap power off again. 
Once the devices are powered off, go ahead and grab your SIM ejector tool. Find the SIM tray on your old device and push the SIM card ejector tool into the SIM ejector hole. That'll make your SIM card tray pop out and you can pull it the rest of the way out. On your Fold 4, the SIM tray is going to be in the top left part of the phone. So I'm going to go ahead and push the ejector tool into there, pull the tray out. You'll see a notch in the upper left corner of your SIM tray. Just line that up with the notch on your SIM card and push your SIM card in. Now just push the tray back in with the SIM card facing up. Once the SIM card's in, you can go ahead and power back on both devices. If you have an unlocked Fold 4 like I do, you'll get this little pop-up that tells you that the device is going to need to restart to configure features supported by the new SIM card. If you have a carrier version of the phone, you likely won't see this, and that's okay. So right now, I'm just going to tap Restart and Switch. Once the phone reboots, I'll be able to start the setup process. And since I don't need the old device quite yet, I'm going to go ahead and set that to the side, and we'll just focus on the Fold 4. Now just hit Start to start the process. The first thing you need to do is agree to Samsung's terms and conditions, as well as their privacy policy, but you don't need to agree to sending them diagnostic data. And diagnostic data doesn't include any personal data, it just includes anonymous usage data to help Samsung improve their products. So go ahead and select whether or not you want to enable that, then tap agree. Next, you need to connect to a Wi-Fi network, so go ahead and select your network, and enter the password. Next, it's going to check for updates and install them. If you have an unlocked device, the next screen you'll be met with is Copy Apps and Data. If you have a carrier device from someone like AT&T or Verizon, you may get an option that says Backup and Restore Data with Verizon or AT&T or something like that. Do not use their methods, just skip those methods until you get to this page. So once you're on this page, tap Next. Now what you're going to do from here is going to depend on if you have your old device physically with you, or if you use the USB transfer method that I showed you guys a minute ago. If you use the USB method, click Don't Copy for now, and I'll show you guys how to get the data off the USB stick in a minute. Since I'm going to be transferring data from my Fold 3, I'm just going to tap Next. Now it's going to verify that you have your old device with you, and I do, so I'm going to tap Next again. And I can select to transfer either from a Samsung device or a non-Samsung Android device, as well as from an iPhone. I'm going to start by transferring from the Fold 3 so you guys can see the maximum amount of data you can transfer. Then I'll show you guys the limitations when transferring from either a non-Samsung Android device or an iPhone. So for now, I'm just going to tap Galaxy Android. Then I'll tap Continue to agree to the terms and conditions and it'll give me two connection options, either connecting with a cable or wirelessly. Since I'm still charging my device, I'm going to go ahead and use wirelessly for now. And at this point, I'm going to grab my other device and bring it back into the picture. Now I'm going to open up the Smart Switch application on my old device. And if you don't have Smart Switch on your old device yet, just download it from the Google Play Store like I showed you guys earlier. Then I'm going to select Send Data. And since I'm still charging my Fold 4, I'm going to go ahead and tap Wireless on both. After a moment, the Fold 4 will find the Fold 3. I just have to allow the connection on the Fold 3. Now the Fold 4 is going to search through all the data on the old device to find out what it can transfer. And one more thing I want to point out while it's searching through this data is that you may notice that the screen is brighter on the old devices I'm using compared to the Fold 4. And that's because the Fold 4's brightness is significantly limited until you finish setting up the device. At which point the brightness would be about the same between the two devices. Now that it's finished checking through all the data, I have the same three options that I had when I was using the USB stick method. I'm going to select custom again so I can show you guys the extra things you can transfer when connected directly to the old device. Now I'm just going to tap next and I'll be met with a list of everything I can transfer. Now, since I already went through all these transfer options when I showed you guys how to transfer data to a USB stick, I'm not gonna go through them again here. I'm just gonna show you guys the extra things you can transfer when connected directly to your old device. And this is gonna be a little bit different depending on if your old device is a Samsung device, a non-Samsung Android device, or an iPhone. So the first extra thing you can transfer when connected directly to your old device is all of your Samsung and Google accounts. The second extra thing you can transfer is found in the Galaxy Wearable option. And you see that I can transfer a ton more data specifically for my Galaxy Watch 4 Classic. And that's because my Watch 4 Classic is connected to my old device. And if you look at the Watch 4 Classic itself, you'll see that it automatically started a smartwatch version of Smart Switch, which is what gives me all of these extra options. And the last extra thing you can transfer is found in settings, and that's called Samsung Cloud Settings. And that's similar to something like iCloud Settings, but for a Samsung device. So those are all the extra things you can transfer when directly connected to an older Samsung device. Now let's see the extra things you can transfer when directly connected to a non-Samsung Android device. So here is a Pixel 5, and since this is still an Android device, I'm going to go ahead and select the Galaxy Android option again. And this time, since I've got a pretty good amount of charge on my Fold 4, I'm going to go ahead and use the cable method. So I'm going to plug my Pixel 5 directly into my Fold 4 using a USB-C to USB-C cable. Then I'll get a pop-up on my old device asking me to allow the Fold 4 to search through all of its data. 
I'm gonna go ahead and tap OK. And the Fold 4 is gonna start searching through all the data on the old device. Now that it's done searching, I'm gonna tap Custom again and tap Next. And the only extra thing you can transfer when directly connected to a non-Samsung Android device is all of your Google accounts. And in case you're wondering, in the Galaxy wearable section, I still only have the plugins option, even though I have a Galaxy Watch 4 currently connected to my Pixel 5. So that's all the extra stuff you can transfer when directly connected to a non-Samsung Android device. Now let's see what you could transfer when connected to an iPhone. Now to have my iPhone out, I'm gonna go ahead and tap iPhone iPad. And with this method, you do have to directly connect both devices with a physical cable. You can't use a wireless method when transferring from an iPhone. That cable can either be a lightning to USB-C cable or a lightning to USB-A cable with a USB-A to USB-C adapter. In this case, I would plug the adapter side into my Fold 4 and the lightning side into the iPhone. Once both are plugged in, I'll get a pop-up on my iPhone asking me to trust my other device. Go ahead and tap trust, then enter in your passcode. Once you've entered in the passcode, tap next on your Fold 4, and it'll search through all the data on your iPhone and show you everything you can transfer. And as you can see, you can transfer a ton of data, even from an iPhone. For starters, you can transfer all of your calls and contacts. You can transfer all of your messages. And you can see here it says last 30 days. But if I tap this arrow, I can select all of the messages. If I tap the arrow for apps, it'll ask me to first sign into my Google account. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Now that I'm logged in, it's gonna tell me that it's going to search for Android versions of all the iOS apps I have installed on my iPhone, and it's going to download those if they're available. And if there's no exact match, then it's just gonna give me recommendations for apps that may be pretty close. And as I mentioned earlier, you can transfer WhatsApp data, but I personally don't use WhatsApp, so I can't really show that to you guys. Just know that you need to have this apps option checked, and it'll walk you through the transfer process. I get the option to transfer data from specific iPhone apps, including the calendar, the Apple Notes application, any bookmarks I have set up in the Safari browser, and any alarms I have set up with my clock app. I can also transfer a bunch of settings, most importantly, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth settings. So what this means, specifically for the Wi-Fi, is that I won't have to re-enter any of my Wi-Fi passwords. They're automatically gonna be pulled over from the iPhone. And surprisingly, from an iPhone, I can even transfer my home screen app and shortcut layout. And the reason that's so surprising is for some reason, that's not supported when transferring from a non-Samsung Android device. But it is good to see that Samsung's making it really easy to switch from iOS to Android. Because once upon a time, that was an incredibly difficult thing to do. And further down, I get the option to transfer all of my images, videos, audio files, and documents that are saved on the iPhone. So this does not include anything that's saved to the iCloud and not downloaded directly to the iPhone. So if you have a bunch of images, videos, and things like that that you also want to transfer to your Fold 4, you'll first need to download those from the iCloud before they'll transfer to the new device. You may have also noticed that there's no arrows next to the images, videos, audio, and documents like you saw when transferring from a Samsung device or a non-Samsung Android device. So that means you can't select specific images, videos, audio, or documents. You have to transfer either all of it or none of it. And at the bottom, you can tap to find out what data can't be transferred. And it's FaceTime and voice call history, which makes sense because you can't get FaceTime on an Android device. Messages with iMessage effects can't be transferred either, which also makes sense. And you also can't transfer locked notes or the home screen wallpaper or lock screen wallpapers. Scrolling back to the top, the last detail that's missing is there's no time estimate when transferring from an iPhone. If for some reason you won't have your iPhone with you and you still wanna transfer some data, it is possible to use this get data from iCloud instead option. And all you have to do is log into your iCloud account on the Fold 4 and it'll transfer some of that data. And if you tap learn more, you'll see that it's really not that much data at all. All you get are your contacts, memos, calendars, photos, videos, and documents that are currently synced with your iCloud. So that means you don't get any of your messages or any photos and videos that are saved just to the device and not in your iCloud. So if you're gonna be transferring from an iPhone, I do highly recommend that you plug it directly into your Fold 4. So now that we've seen everything you can transfer with the iPhone, let's jump back to the Fold 3 and finish the transfer process with that device. Once you've selected everything you wanna transfer, at the top, you'll see the total amount of data you'll be transferring and about how long it's gonna to take to transfer all that data from the old device. Something very important to point out here is that if you're gonna be transferring a ton of data, like more than 100 gigs to your new device, it would be best to transfer wirelessly and have both devices plugged in to make sure that the batteries don't die before all that data is transferred. Or if you're transferring from an iPhone, you can keep the two plugged into each other, just make sure that your Fold 4 is on a wireless charger because that can continue to charge while it's transferring all the data and the iPhone will actually be getting its charge from the Fold 4. 
So now that I've selected everything I want to transfer, I'm going to scroll to the bottom and tap transfer. Since I decided to transfer all of my messages, I'm going to get a notification saying that that's quite a lot of data and it may take a while to transfer all of it, but I do personally like to keep all of my messages. So I'm going to set that back to all and tap transfer. Then I'm going to get a notification on the old device asking me to copy the data. So I'm going to tap copy and I need to sign in with my fingerprint over here. And now it's going to start copying all of the data. And the first thing it's going to start copying is the accounts. Once it finishes transferring the accounts, it's going to show you which specific accounts it transferred. Next, you'll be asked if you want to restore data from an old device using one of Samsung's backups. But don't do this since you've already selected all the data you want to transfer using Smart Switch. So go ahead and tap Don't Restore at the bottom. Next, you'll be able to continue setting up your Fold 4 while all the data transfers in the background. And at the end of the setup process, you'll be taken to these tips that show you how to protect your phone. So since this is a folding display, it's not quite as tough as something you would find on either an iPhone or one of Samsung's other flagship devices like the S22 Ultra. So it just tells you not to do some obvious things like use hard or sharp objects on the screen, don't throw it in the sand, don't fold things inside of the device like keys and things like that. Most importantly, it says not to remove the protective film that's on this main display. And it also tells you not to apply any other films or stickers because they could damage the screen. So if you want to put a screen protector on the inside of the screen, Samsung's explicitly saying not to do that. And one more very important one is that the Fold 4 contains some pretty strong magnets and it tells you to keep it at least six inches away from implantable medical devices like a pacemaker. So definitely avoid putting this in a chest pocket if you do have a pacemaker. Then we're just gonna tap next. And it's going to tell me that I'm all set up and you get two options to either tap finish or explore your galaxy. If you tap explore your galaxy, you're going to get tips on how to get the most out of your new device. Once you're done with that, you can tap back and tap finish. Now I can go ahead and start using my fold four while everything continues transferring in the background. And if I pull down the notification shade, I can see that it's 67.3% done transferring. And if I tap this little arrow, it shows me that I have eight minutes left. And if I tap the notification, it'll show me exactly what's transferring and how far along it is with that specific transfer. Once all the data finishes transferring, you get a notification saying that it's done transferring all of your data. And you get a notification on the old device saying that it's all done as well. And if you're also transferring over a Galaxy Watch, you'll get a notification there asking you to connect to the new device. And the process for this will be to reset your Galaxy Watch, connect it to the new device, and it'll automatically restore all of your data back to the Galaxy Watch. And if I go to my home screen and pull down my notification shade, you'll see that it's still organizing all of my data. So if I tap this down arrow, I can see that there's still 42 minutes left until it's completely finished setting up all the data. And if I tap it, it'll show me what it's currently organizing. So right now it's updating all of my messages data. Now, fortunately at this point, all of the data has been transferred and I don't need to keep the old device nearby anymore. So I can just tap done and either turn the old device off or set it somewhere else. Once everything finishes unpacking, you'll be given the data transfer results with everything that was transferred. Now just tap next. And if you're also transferring a Galaxy Watch, it'll walk you through the rest of that process now. Once that's done, it'll tell you that you're all set and that you just need to sign into your calendar to get all of your synced events. Now just tap done and everything will be transferred to your new device. If you backed up all your data to a USB stick, then you would just go through the entire setup process to get to this screen on your Fold 4 without using any of the restore methods that were offered. From this screen, you would go to your applications, tap the search bar and type in smart switch. Then select the smart switch application and tap that same SD card icon that you used to transfer the data to the USB stick in the first place. Now go ahead and plug your USB stick into your new device and I get the option to restore from USB storage. And if I have multiple backups saved to the USB stick, I can tap this little arrow here and select one of the individual backups. For now, I'm just gonna select this one and I'll get these same three options for transferring data that you guys saw earlier. And if I tap custom and tap next, you'll see it's the exact same options as before. And since you already selected all the options for what you wanna back up when you saved everything to the USB stick in the first place, you can just select all the items, scroll to the bottom and tap restore. If you have to transfer data from multiple USB sticks or even multiple devices if you want to, all you'd have to do is finish the restore process with one USB stick. Then once the process finishes, it'll take you back out of the smart switch application, at which point you can just reopen the smart switch application and select receive data if you want to get data from another phone or tap the micro SD card option and select a new USB storage to finish the transfer. 
I recently picked up a ton of Samsung devices, so be sure to subscribe and turn notifications so you don't miss any of my deep dive coverage on all of these devices. And if you can't wait for my unknown features video on the Fold 4, you can check out the unknown features video on the Fold 3 by tapping the link in the upper left corner. Or you can check out one of my more recent videos by tapping the link in the upper right. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.